Corticon makes it easy to create and update complex business rules that are deployed as web services. Let's see how to model a rule based on a condition and test the execution of that rule in our development environment. Our scenario involves grocery store checkout computers. The store wants to reward customers based on their purchases. In Corticon Studio, I created a project and a Corticon vocabulary. I also previously created a rule to extract the department code and alert the clerk if the customer has liquor in their cart. When we change the department, there was no need to check ID. Now we'll create rule sheets to reward customer loyalty and combine them with the existing rule into a rule flow. First we'll create a rule sheet to determine whether a customer is a preferred shopper. In the next rule sheet, we can filter to obtain those with preferred accounts before we check to see whether their purchases qualify them for a promotion. We'll name the new rule sheet preferred underscore test dot ERS. Open its scope and add the customer is preferred and the association to membership. We'll give that the alias account. We add a test that sees whether the account is empty and sets an account that has activity as a preferred member. Let's save. We create another rule sheet. Name it coupons.ers and open its scope. We bring in the coupon the customer the customer's cart and the items in the cart. We'll have two aliases to define items in the current cart. All items and bakery items. All items will be used for cashier totals. We drag item into the scope twice. That's illegal until they have different aliases within scope. So we give one the alias all items. The other gets the alias bakery items. We also need the preferred member entity which will give the alias account. Now let's make a filter in the coupons rule sheet. Customers who are not preferred card holders are not eligible for promotions. So we want to filter out non-preferred customers on the coupons rule sheet. A filter expression limits its data to only that subset that satisfy the filter. A filter does not permanently remove or delete any data. It simply excludes data from evaluation by the rules in the same rule sheet. In the Coupons Rule Sheet Filters section, on line 1, enter Customer dot is preferred member equals T. Let's create a rule that uses the filter survivors. The rule will create a 5% off coupon when a customer buys three or more items from the bakery, Department 285. To determine if three or more items were purchased from the bakery department, we do not want to count all items in the shopping cart, just those from the bakery. The bakery items alias in the scope section will focus on only those items. A filter expression will reduce the size of the collection and trigger the coupon if the required count of items that survive the filter hits the threshold. We enter the filter, the condition, the action, and the statement. We filter through only items in the bakery department and use the collection operator size to count the number of these items in the cart. We set a marker when that is true 
and create a new coupon. and check the column to bind it to this condition. And link to a statement that comes up on the register or receipt saying, your bakery purchases got you a 5% discount on your next shopping cart. The filter we created is applied to every relevant level in the scope. It is a full filter, applying to the customer, the current cart, and the level we want to filter, the items. We can disable the filter at selected levels to make it a limiting filter by right-clicking on a filter level and then selecting Disable. When we disable the filter on the customer and current cart, their values are grayed out. We'll save this rule sheet and assemble a flow through the rule sheets in this project. We create a new rule flow named GroceryStore.ERF and in the Project Explorer we drag Checks.ERS to the canvas and then Coupons then drag Preferred underscore Test.ERS we then link them so they flow from one to the other. When multiple rule sheets are included in a rule flow file, they execute in their rule flow sequence. When we test, we'll use the rule flow instead of the rule sheets. Now let's test this rule. We create a rule test named coupons.ert and set it to use the rule flow as the test subject, so we test all three rule sheets. We'll create some test data to try this out. We need the preferred customer, and the customer, and cart. The cart needs three bakery items, Department 285. We'll create one item, and trim it, and copy it twice. We run the test. The rule works as expected. Let's drop attributes that are not relevant so we get a better view. Now let's do a regression test. We change the department of one item to 291. No coupon now but you have to check the customer's ID. That rule was on an existing rule sheet in the project. Every customer has that rule applied. Let's get our preferred customer back and add one more item from Department 285. Here's the coupon. And there is still the call to check the customer's ID. The complete rule flow works as intended. That concludes our demonstration of how to use Corticon Studio to create and test a rule flow that includes filters and collections.